Welcome to this video presentation on discrete signals. In this demonstration I'm going to show you an example discrete signal which was acquired from an ECG or heart wave signal. Um, now the signal was acquired by a healthcare professional who then uploaded it to this website visionet.org and this website is basically just a resource for researchers um, of physiological signals such as heart wave signals and brain wave signals so it's just a big database of, of signals that researchers can use uh, to develop algorithms. Um, now in the first demonstration of discrete signals I showed you how to acquire or capture a signal using a um, data acquisition card. Now more, more often than not the data is actually available to us already so we don't actually have to acquire the signals the data is available for us to download or to open up as a file so this is just an example of a, that type of situation where we actually haven't acquired the data the data is just simply available to us so at this, on this website we have lots of signals so in this drop down list we have lots of different types of signals and I can see a brainwave signal here EEG signal um, scrolling through there's another one a gate analysis but there's lots of different types of signals and the one I'm going to use is a ECG signal which I think was obtained for the analysis of a sleep apnea disorder um, now the website um, will, will show the data in lots of different ways for example the default ways to show the waveform of the data so just scrolling down there's the waveform of the ECG data which is very useful um, but uh, what I'd like to show you is uh, example data that is available in a more general form so from the website I can download the data in lots of different ways so I've one here a .mat file which is a file format that is used by MATLAB so it's a very specific type of file format now, I'm going to use a more general one um, uh, uh, probably a more common one as well is to show the samples as text okay so if I click on this I'll now see the data being displayed as text so just scrolling down there's my data and we see that the data is presented in two column format the first column shows the timestamp of when the data was acquired so I see that each timestamp is 0 0.01 seconds um, so that's 10 milliseconds so 10 milliseconds apart which gives you a sampling rate of 100 samples every second or 100 Hertz okay so let's just copy that data and paste it into a text editor I'm going to use notepad okay so I should have um, I have 10 seconds of data just specify that at the very top and so I just specify that there 10 seconds so of 10 seconds of data at one, 100 samples every second so I should have a thousand samples of data what I'll do now is paste that into notepad and this is a, a common way to I'll save it there but this is a very common way to obtain data so as in text format now you can also get the data in binary format um, now having the data structured in this way this particular way having two columns isn't necessarily common um, but once it's w w the important thing is that we have the sample values here and once we have those in a text file it's easy to read the, the, the data into something like MATLAB which is a signal processing tool um, alternatives might be Scilab or Octave but regardless once we have it in this sort of general format we can bring it into one of those tools to analyze so let's just go to MATLAB now and we'll load in that data so x equals and there's a function called load which allows us to load in the data and I have that data stored in a folder called test sigs and I saved it as uh, example ecg dot text okay. <coughs> A 
oh, sorry, this ECG example.txt. Okay, so there's my data, and that data should just appear as my numbers. So I'll just scroll back up through those numbers. I should have a thousand of them. And now we can see I have two columns of data, which was just taking in from the the text file. Now I can see my first column of data, they've all been read out as zeros. If I just compare that with my text file, I see that my first column is in a, an unusual format. It seems to be a format that MATLAB doesn't recognize. Okay, So it's just reading in all these values as zeros. Um, well, it's reading in the second column of data accurately. So let's flick back to MATLAB again. Just compare. So yeah, all the second column of numbers seems to be accurate, but the first column are all zeros. So MATLAB had difficulty reading in the first column of data. But we have the important information. We know that all the samples are separated by 0 0.01 seconds. So uh, we can analyze that data easily enough because we, as I say, we have the sampling rate and we know what the amplitude represents. We can analyze that data. So what I'd like to do now is just discount the, um, the first column of data and just read in the second column of data. And this is the MATLAB command to do that. So the variable x is basically a matrix with two columns in it and what I'm doing here is taking the second column and storing it in a new variable called y. Okay, so now let's just plot my new sequence of da numbers. Well, of course it's not the new sequence, it's just the same as the other values. Same as the second column, exact same. And let's plot it. Plot y in red zeros. And here is my data. So each of these red zeros is an individual sample. Now, it's not easy to visualize the data like this, so I like to connect the zeros together just to make it easy to visualize. But each one of these represents each discrete sample of my ECG signal. Let's click back to MATLAB and we'll plot Y in blue. So this will connect the dots which makes it easier to visualize the data. Now because we know where what this data where this data came from we can start to do some analysis. We can see for example each one of these peaks is associated with a, a heartbeat. Okay? So it's the pulse of your heart is associated with each one of those peaks. And we could do some data analysis now to determine maybe the average heart rate or the deviation of heart rate over time. Because that's very easy to do now once we have the data stored as a sequence of numbers. Now the other important information of course is we're able to recognize um, we're able to recognize the, the timeline of each heartbeat. So we're able to determine maybe the distance between these two heartbeats. So I can see, for example, that goes starts at 40, finishes at around 129. So that would be a heart, how many samples in that? 40 to 129 would be about 89 samples. Okay, so there's 89 samples of data between heartbeats. That would mean that uh, it's 89 divided by 100. That's 0.89 seconds between heartbeats. Okay, so we can only do that analysis because we know what the sampling rate is. Okay. Okay, so the idea behind this demonstration was basically to show you how you can load in data or look at discrete signals that you haven't acquired yourself. The data has been made available by somebody else and that's a very common thing for people to do. It's just to make the data available and for you to analyze the data um, by, by looking at the data in a file rather than having to acquire the signal yourself. Okay, so thanks for your attention.